All right, we're going to talk about data center concepts and CLOS architecture or CLO, depending on who pronounces it, like tomato or tomato, I think. And so let's get into this. When you start looking at data center architectures, you'll hear concepts like spine and leaf. What that speaks of is the CLO architecture developed by Charles Clo was his name, or Kloss, in the uh, 1950s. It was a non-blocking architecture whereby which you would have a spine switch connected to multiple leafs, and it was as simple as that. If you had another spine switch with other leafs, well, let's just say the same leafs, leaf one and leaf two, spine one and spine two, then those leaves would also connect to spine two. Never would you make this connection here between spines. All right, so you would not do that. We'll draw a red X on that. You do, you do not connect spines, nor do you connect leaves. You do not connect leaves either. All right, so that's it's as simple as that. That is the Kloss architecture, spine and leaf. They call it a three-stage architecture. And what that means is three-stage. What that means is uh, coming from one node, if something is hanging off of this node, it goes through stage one, stage two, stage three to get to something else. Okay, so... It's one, two, three hops, pretty much is what they're talking about. Now, that's more clearly seen when you don't fold the architecture. What I mean by fold is this is actually folded over. So if you look at it drawn, let's draw it over here. Excuse me. Let's draw the same thing over here. Let's draw leaf one. Leaf one is up here. Then... Let's put an L on that. And then spine one is right here. Let me erase this. And then leaf two is here. Leaf two. Sorry, my uh, not drawing very legibly. Okay, so as you can see here, leaf one connects to uh, right here, leaf one connects to spine one and leaf two connects to spine one. And so they connect, they communicate like this. Well, that's the same thing as we see here. Leaf one connects to spine one, leaf two connects to spine one. So when you don't fold the architecture over or the picture like we do here, if we don't fold it, it really looks like this. Okay, so the three stages is more clearly seen at this point. Stage one, stage two, stage three. Also, you might come across something known as super spine. And that's just a layer above spine with the same concepts. You have leaf switches down here and a spine switch or two, and then a couple super spines. You just follow the same concepts. Nothing ever connects together. but they mesh with the upper layer. Okay, there you go. This is super spine, spine, and leaf. And what I meant was when I said nothing ever connects together is of course, nothing connects together at a like layer. So you don't do this. Right, but you've established full mesh connections with the layer above and below. Ultimately, in the end, it's your network. If you want to mesh something together, or excuse me, if you want to connect something together at a layer and you have a really good reason to do so, then do it. It's your network. If you know that the way that uh, you implement your technology and your architecture is sound 
and solid and makes sense for you and it uh, performs in the way you need it to, then that's that's your decision. You know, there's suggested architectures out there, uh, best practices, but that doesn't mean that you, uh, so the, the network police are going to come arrest you and <laughs> shut your network down if you don't follow their architecture, okay? Lab time. Okay, let's do this. So I am going to move this out of the way and we're going to put a bunch of QFXs in here. Add an object, add a node. Let's put QFX PFE. Let's put 10 of those. I'm going to do two spines and eight leaves. All right, there's our PFEs. I'm going to move those out of the way. Ten QFX routing engines. Knowing that the routing engines is what makes the connections in Eve, I'm going to orient them in such a way that we make those connections from the routing engines and the picture looks nice. Eve has some nice alignment tools. Let's just throw these in place. And then let's highlight that leaf layer, right click, horizontally align. That's nice. I wish I had a way like Invisio to distribute them evenly uh, with even spacing. If anybody knows how to do that, drop me a comment. Now let's match up a PFE to every one of these REs. I don't even think I'm going to rename these. I think I'm just going to let Eve and G pick the naming, you know, the, the numbering, so it keeps track of them. So we'll just call the spines 16 and 17. And then the leafs, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So we have a row of eight leafs and two spines. Let's use port zero and one on each leaf. So on 18, we will use zero and we will connect to zero of the spine. And then we'll use port one on the leaf. And then in the next port, well, excuse me, the same port on the other spine. So zero, zero, and then zero, one. And we'll just keep on going like that. Sometimes you need to move them around to get them where you want them to, to lay nicely. Um, let's not forget the link between the packet forwarding engine and the routing engine, EM1 to EM1. We need to do that to all of them. Okay, let's start these up. I'm going to highlight all of them. Start selected. They should start turning blue. And you should see starting messages. There we go. Blue, 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 blue. Okay, they're all blue. Let's click on the routing engines of each one. Let's move them off to the side and cascade them. And let's start watching them boot up. To check your system load, click status, and we see my CPU usage is 40%, memory usage is 7, disk usage is 35. So my EVNG system doesn't look like it's getting, you know, saturated in any, any way necessarily. So let's watch these boot up. Okay. Over five minutes later, we're seeing some boot up 
progress. It was uh, bogging down for a little bit there. And instead of starting up separate Telnet or SSH windows for each device, if you have a, a uh, multi-tabbed terminal emulator like MOBA Xterm, this will make it a lot easier to manage an environment like this. The way that you find the port number, go to the node, float over it, and look in the bottom left corner, and it'll say 32784, 32785, 32776, excuse me, you want the routing engine. 32786, 87, 88, 89. You see in the bottom left corner, it's changing the port number, and that's what you would set your port number to be. We need 10 of these, remember? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, let's start modifying them some more. Edit session. That's going to be 32788. Say OK. Then change the name of it. Oops. Then double click on it and it'll open up a window. There we go. And keep on doing that. Okay, we got login sessions to all 10. Also something very nice, if you don't want to log into each one of these individually, click multi-exec uh, multi and you're logging into all of them at the same time. This is wonderful. Waiting for the password prompt on all of them. <laughs> They're coming up one by one, that's funny. Gotta wait for all of them to show up. We're almost there. Okay. Then when you're done logging into all of them and it settles down, just exit multi-execution -ex multi mode and you'll go back to single screen mode. But before we do that, execute the CLI. Because we did log in as root, and when you log in as root, it immediately drops you into a shell. So you need to type CLI to get to operational mode. At any, at any given time, if you want to exclude a certain session from multi-execution mode, you just click this exclude button for that terminal session. Looks like we got them all now. I wonder what the forwarding plane looks like. Show chassis FPC. And I'm going to ask for only FPC 1 or 0, excuse me. Empty. We're still waiting for the forwarding plane to come up on these things. It's been a while. We're still waiting on the forwarding plane to come up. Still shows empty for slot zero line card. Ah, there's one online testing down here. See that? Okay, it's been 10 or 15 minutes at least. So booting up a lot of these QFXs, you're gonna have to be patient.
online testing. All right, for all of them. So now we want to see interfaces. Show interface, terse, media, grip, beginning of line, XE for 10 gig. These other ones have to calm down first. Gosh. Getting a lot of on-screen messages. I'm kind of waiting for it to calm down. Okay, let's look at that. There we go. Got some XE interfaces. Some of them show down, some of them show up. I think these things are still settling down. Let's look. Yep. Still waiting for them all to go up. And interestingly, you're in a virtual environment with not physical cables. So these interfaces are going to come up apparently without needing to have a physical connection to something, you know, a fiber laser or a copper electrical media. Since we're just in a software environment, apparently they're just all coming up. There we go. I think they are all up now. And the utilization in our EVE environment actually came down now that they're done booting. So I'll be curious to see how well this system runs now that it's booted up. Maybe it was just the initial boot up that took time, but they all seem to be functional at this point. Show route. They all have a routing table. All right. Well, that's all I got for booting up multiple QFX devices. I got 10 of them running, and we'll try to do some exercises later in them. Bye-bye.